So we do have to start with AI, especially after we did just get those results uh, okay. from Broadcom. You have that company basically talking about, at least here in the release, a measured ramp into large-scale AI networks. But then you think about NVIDIA and the fact that it just trounced current quarter expectations, largely because of the demand it's seeing for its AI-related and enabled chips last week. I just want to get your thoughts on what we're seeing uh, in terms of this wave of new technological capabilities and whether it's going to be as big as everybody and the investors uh, really believe and hope and pray that it is. Well, I actually think, Morgan, uh, it will be bigger than people anticipate. Uh, this isn't something that I've come to the conclusion of the last six months. I started betting on AI six years ago, invested in a big way in AI companies doing call centers, et cetera, like Unifor and ASAP, et cetera, on it. Uh, I think it will be bigger than the cloud and bigger than the Internet. So combined, I think it will, however, move it three to four times the pace on it. Will people get overexcited a little bit and then a little bit pessimistic? That always occurs with any major new technology area. But I think uh, it is the best place to bet long term. And I think you'll see the next major companies come out of AI startups or major traditional companies reinventing themselves. NVIDIA, I think it was just a start there. Jensen's done an amazing job. Uh, you never bet against Hawk uh, at Broadcom. He runs one of the most tight financial operations I've seen. He executes extremely well. Uh, I think he's got a very good strategy in front of him on the direction. And when he says he's going to play in AI and machine learning, you can almost take that to the bank in terms of what they'll be able to do there long term. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't put AMD into that category. Uh, Lisa Sue, who's probably been the biggest turnaround uh, uh, it has been done in high tech in the last two decades, uh, she just continues to execute better and better and better in terms of direction. She acquired one of my companies, Pensando, about a year ago that focused on the cloud at the edge. Uh, she reinvents herself. And I think when she said at uh, WEF and no, Electronic Show in January that AI was going to be the next major focus, the next big thing, she reinvented. Really so I'd expect her to execute as well. So semiconductor hmm. companies, they're kind of back in vogue. And uh, you've seen that increase with Broadcom with 38% year over year growth uh, in terms of uh, the stock so far this year. And I think it's, if I remember the numbers right, 20 out of 28 analysts having a buy to a strong buy on it. So yeah. they're executing well, but they're riding the big AI wave. So, so when I think about Cisco back in the 90s, you just mentioned the internet. And, and you, look at a, you look at a stock chart of Cisco. I mean, it went parabolic from like 98 until 01 uh, through the tech bubble and, and then the bust. Um, and, and you could make the argument, looking at an NVIDIA stock, for example, that at least the parabolic part, because we don't know how the rest of it plays out, but the parabolic part is, is, is very similar. Um, so when you talk about the possibility this could be bigger than the Internet, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, as you uh, set up the question, Morgan, uh, you're, you're absolutely right that with NVIDIA, it's approaching a trillion dollars in terms of valuation. There are only four other companies at that level, so it's clearly priced for good execution to strong execution. However, in terms of when you move into these new waves, the revenues that you get, the growth that you get early in the wave is a small percentage of what occurs longer term. So do I think you'll see major movement in terms of stocks that are focused in this area? Yes, I do. And I, when you look at the top six stocks in the NASDAQ, as an example, I think they've accounted for 80 percent of the growth of 3.5 trillion in the NASDAQ move so far. So early innings, I do see a very similarity to what Cisco did. Uh, we had to explain to people what the Internet was in the early 90s. Then once people got it, the major investors said, if you don't have an Internet strategy, we're not even going to invest in the company. I think we're going to see the same thing in AI. There will be a shakeout. There will be some tremendous hot startups that, that uh, don't make it, but some of them will emerge to be the next big players in the industry. And I think you will see semiconductor players as well as some of the traditional larger players ride this wave as well. Perhaps the Microsofts, the Googles of the world, the Apples of the world. And of course, we're seeing all of this uh, begin to take root and play out amid a, a tense geopolitical backdrop, especially when you look at the part of the world where all these so-called picks and shovels and semiconductors are mass manufactured, uh, and that's Asia. The decoupling of China and the U.S., even as we do see some American CEOs traveling to China, some of them like Elon Musk for the first time since the pandemic this week, how does all of this factor into this broader tech discussion? 
Well, just to give your viewers a quick snapshot, uh, uh, I ran uh, Asia Pacific for Dr. Ann Wang, uh, and China was that area that I learned very well, and I've known the market for 40 years. It's been a very good market to Cisco over the years that I was there. However, in the last uh, seven to 10 years, it's moved into a win-lose uh, type of mentality versus the U.S., and especially the U.S. technology companies.